Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be setting up a new model on our EFOS transmitter. Hi guys, so just up there you might notice a plane. This is a new to me SBAC, a Dynam SBAC 342. So what I'm going to do is get it connected up to this receiver here. Um, I'm not actually going to put this in the plane, I'm just going to set it up on the desktop with EFOS, but we'll go through the steps of setting it up, getting it all working, um, so that you can just plug it into your plane and fly it. Um, I'm not going to go over the uh, stabilised stuff in this video, I'm just going to be setting up the receiver and the model in EFOS. So let's get over to the bench and let's get started. So by the end of this video, we're going to have a basic plane set up on this receiver right here. So we're going to add the standard four channels. We're going to also add something like a, a throttle cut. And we'll also look at rates and expo to see how you can add those two. So first thing we'll do is power on the transmitter. And I'm going to ignore all this because we're just going to create a new model. What we're going to do is go into our system model select and create a new model. So we're just going to choose a standard aeroplane. We just want one channel for the engine. We'll leave it on two channels for the ailerons. You can obviously reduce this to one if you want to use a Y lead. We've got no flaps on this model. Uh, we're using a traditional uh, tail and we have one elevator servo on one rudder so servo. Obviously, if these are different for your, for your plane, you can just change them nice and easily like that and it will update it for the mixer for you. So let's just give this a name and we'll give it a picture. So there we go. We've created the basic model already. So what we can actually do is now bind up the receiver. So we're going to go into RF system. We'll go to internal module. We'll turn it on. This one is uh, on ACCST D16. Obviously, for this transmitter, you need to be on uh, ACCST version 2, I believe 2.1 even. So our 2.4 is on. We have our DBI readout at the top now. It automatically assigns a random uh, model ID, so you don't need to worry about that. Obviously, if you need to change the channels, change them. So I'm going to set this to 16 channels. And what we're going to do is just bind it. We hold down the fail safe button and turn on our receiver. We we'll click bind, eight channel telemetry on, and we can see we're now flashing away. So we should all be good to go. So we'll OK that. Power cycle the receiver. And you can see now our uh, the DB for our RSSI has jumped up to 109. So we're actually getting our RSSI. We're all bound up. So what I'm going to do now is connect up my little demo plane so we can see what's going on. Right, so I'm going to just put the receiver around the back just to get it out of the way. So then we can just see everything. Now, what you'll notice is if I move the controls, you can see things aren't quite right. I've plugged everything in AETR, but at the moment when you create a model in the wizard, it doesn't stick to that order, which is a little bit annoying, but it has been um, noted on the GitHub. So hopefully this will be fixed in future releases. So if, you, if we go in, you notice that the ailerons are actually on channel one and two, where AETR, ideally you'd want aileron one, elevator two, throttle three, rudder four, and then after that you would have the second aileron, elevator, flap, whatever, continuing the order down. So what I'm going to do now is just edit this mix. So we're going to first edit the aileron and put the second aileron. I'm going to put it on channel six so that it's not actually conflicting with anything. The reason is if you put it straight on channel five, it messes up the output names. So we're going to go elevator, edit, We'll put this on channel two. Three, 
throttle. Well, obviously, hopefully, you won't need to do this in future versions of EFOS. Rudder on channel four. And finally, I'll put the second aileron on channel five. So now you can see everything is controlling the correct thing. Some, some things aren't reversed when they need to be, but we can fix that. So what I'll do is we'll then head into the output screen. So here we can see everything that we want. So if I roll to the left, you can see both ailerons are going up. So what I'm going to do is reverse aileron two and just click on it, click inverted. That's it done. So now the ailerons are working correctly. Uh, elevator is absolutely fine and the rudder needs to be reversed. So we'll go to channel four, invert, and everything is now set up. Other than the messing about of the channel order, which again, hopefully will be changed in the future, that's it done. It's all set up. I'm gonna actually go fly this now if you wanted to. However, what you may like to do is add a bit of expo or jewel rates to your model. So what we'll do is we'll head back into ailerons and I'll show you how to do that. So to add Expo is really simple. You just click on Curve here, Expo, and then set how much you want. Now, the way I set this up is the basic one is going to be 100%, so it's full rates. So, for example, if we say that this is not a plywood model of a Spitfire with incorrect flaps, uh, this is actually a 3D plane, for example, where we actually want a lot of throw, but quite high Expo. So we'll set the Expo just to 80% as an extreme example. So you can now see the Expo is already there and we have our Expo. But what we can do is add some rates. And of course, if we have rates, we may want different amounts of Expo too. So we're going to add a new curve and let's go for SE as our rate switch. Actually, I'll do it on SB so it's easier for you guys to see. So we'll set it in the middle. So that can be our mid rates. And we'll add an expo curve. And I don't know, let's say 50%. And again, we'll add another one. Put it down the bottom. This can be our low rates. So expo might only be 30% on this. So now just by changing this switch, you can see in the display the curve moving but you can also see the amount of movement stick center is changing as well so that's our expo but what about the rates themselves well they're just in the next box down so full rates we've got 100 percent. so again let's use our switch here sb and this one will drop the rates down to maybe 75 percent and then let's add our low rates and we'll make that 50%. So now you can see just by moving the switch, our throws are obviously changing, but you can also see that the center movement is fairly consistent now. So it's not actually a bad expo. <laughs> so the, the movement in the center is about same for all different, all the different weights. But that's how you add your weights and expo. If you wanted to go further, you could add differential too. So let's whack on a stupid amount of differential just to demo it. We'll put it on high rates. So we've got 7% differential. So that one, you can actually see on my controls, it's actually the opposite to what I'd like because going down is having a lot of differential, but going up isn't. So we need to invert that, which you can't actually do just by long clicking. 
So let's set that to minus 70. And now the throw up has got all the movement and the throw down has got um, the, the minimal movement for the differential. So that's our basic controls done. Another thing that is very, very useful is a throttle cut. And with EFOS, it's actually built in to the throttle mix. So we're just going to go down to throttle, active condition. This will be our arm switch. So I want mine armed in that position. I'm going to set the trigger value down to 95%. And what that means is the, the throttle stick has to be below 95% before it will arm. So you can see at the moment we're disarmed, but now we're armed. So I've actually done my switch the wrong way around. But you can see that the line here on, on the graph is flatlining. We put it in an armed position and now the throttle is active. And also you can set um, an idle value. So if you're running a nitro, you could set your idle here. So if you cut the throttle, um, it will just go down to idle throttle. And then obviously you could have an override switch to actually kill the engine. But anyway, uh, that there is the basics for setting up a plane in EFOS. There's obviously a lot more you can do. You can add flight timers. Uh, you, you can absolutely do loads, but just have a play. You can add your timers. You can change what the trims do. You can add flight modes. So for example, if you put your flaps down, you could be in a different flight mode so that different things work in different ways you can have telemetry so let's discover our telemetry so now we've got the rssi and the voltage which you could then obviously display on the home screen if you wish but i hope you guys found this video useful it was just a, a quick one to to get a model set up but if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to help get this video out to more people thank you guys see you on the next one